In this video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Niner RLT9 RDO and the Giant Revolt Advanced. Both of these are carbon gravel bikes. I've spent the last few weeks riding these bikes off and on, switching between the bikes. In fact, today I just got done with a ride where I rode the Niner and then I hopped on the Giant. So I'm ready to do a comparison of these bikes. The Niner RLT9 RDO has been my gravel bike over the past year. And it's the bike that convinced me to get back on a gravel specific bike after being on my cross bike for a while. I test rode it in Fort Collins, Colorado and just love the bike. Over the past few years, Giant have been making some alloy bikes that could be used on gravel, the Revolt and also the Tough Road, but they didn't have a high-end carbon gravel bike until now. For 2019, Giant have now released the Revolt Advance. They have three models and I'll be reviewing the Zero, which is the top of the line model. So I'll talk briefly about the components, but I really want to focus on the ride qualities of the frames because both of these bikes are available in different component specs. You can get SRAM and Shimano on both brands. The Three Star RDO comes with SRAM Rival, which is a component group that I like. Uh, there are a few things that I don't like about it. Uh, one is it takes a decent amount of effort to shift, especially compared to Shimano and even SRAM Force. Now that being said, it's not a deal breaker by any means, and I don't shift a gravel bike near as much as I would a mountain bike or a cyclocross bike. Now I do like the fact that you can adjust the shift lever reach and also the inner paddle reach really easily on the SRAM. Now I just want to mention as far as the harder shifting, I did change the housing of the SRAM rival and also the inner wire just to see if that would help. It really didn't. So I don't know if it's the spring tension on the rear derailleur or what, but it's just harder to shift than SRAM force. Something else about SRAM component groups is the brakes tend to need adjustment more often than Shimano road brakes. Now I've had no issues at all with SRAM mountain bike brakes. It's just the road ones require more frequent adjustment. So overall, I do prefer Shimano road components because of the brakes and also the smoothness of the shifting. The Niner comes with a pretty widely flared bar. It's an Easton bar, and I think it's a pretty bold move on behalf of Niner. Uh, because I think it's going to be kind of polarizing. Some people are going to like the flare, some people won't. When I first got on the Niner with the flared bar, I actually didn't like it, but the more I rode it, the more I did like it, and I got really used to it. However, after spending a few weeks riding the Giant, I actually like the bar better on the Giant. It does have a slight flare to it, but I spend most of the time riding on the hoods, and with my hands on the hoods, on the Niner bar, my hands are just turned inward and they're closer together. I like the bigger spacing on the giant handlebar. The small percentage of time that I do spend on the drops, I prefer the flared handlebar on the Niner because your hands are further apart. Also, the bar curves under just a little bit more to give you a little bit better platform for your hands. Doing a quick comparison of the weights of these bikes, the Giant comes in at 20.59 pounds with water bottle cages and pedals. And the Niner comes in at 21.27, about half a pound more, but I think a lot of that is in the rival crank set. That's a pretty heavy crank set. All right, that's it for the components. Now let's talk about the most important thing, and that is ride quality of the frames. There are three main ride qualities that I look for in a gravel frame. Number one is comfort. I need a frame that's going to be comfortable over rough gravel roads, especially on long rides. Number two is I want a frame that's stable. When I'm at speed on a loose gravel road, I want a bike frame that's going to go over that terrain and not wallow around and be stable. And finally, I want a bike that's not a noodle, one that's not too flexy when I stand up and pedal. So let's first talk about comfort, which to me is the most important quality of a gravel frame. I do think both frames are fairly equal in terms of absorbing bumps and chatter on a gravel road. And that's great news because the Niner has been probably the most comfortable gravel frame that I've ridden. If I had to pick one that was more comfortable, I would say the Giant is just a hair more compliant than the Niner. I don't think most riders are going to notice the difference. They're that close. 
but I do notice a very, very slight difference. Now that being said, we also have to talk about the wheels because the Giant comes with carbon wheels and the Niner for this build comes with aluminum wheels. Now I've always said that aluminum wheels on a gravel bike are gonna be a little bit more compliant, a little bit more comfortable, and I'm still gonna say that. At equal tire pressures, I feel like the Niner is going to be a tad more compliant overall considering the frame and also the wheels. However, there's something that I've noticed about carbon wheels that I really didn't think about until I started doing this back-to-back -back comparison, and that is the fact that you can run a little bit lower tire pressure on carbon wheels because of the fact that if you were hit a rock or a root or something, you're not going to dent or ding a carbon wheel like you would an aluminum wheel. So I've been running about two or three PSI lower in the giant wheels, the carbon wheels, versus the aluminum wheels on the Niner. And that has actually made a pretty decent difference in the comfort and the ride quality. And so I think overall with the lower tire pressure on the giant, uh, the Giant is just a little bit more comfortable. Again, I don't think it's a comfort difference that most riders are gonna notice. Now let's talk about the handling of the bikes and the stability of the bikes. And this is where there's a little bit more of a difference between these bikes. So the Giant has shorter chain stays, but a slightly longer top tube and a slightly longer wheelbase than the Niner. Now the Niner has a 45 millimeter fork offset or fork rake, whereas the Giant has a little bit longer fork offset or fork rate, rake at 50 millimeters. So the Giant has less trail than the Niner if you look at the fork offset. Now I know that sounds counterintuitive and I'm not gonna really go into it in this video, but the longer the fork offset, the less trail that you have. So therefore the Giant feels like the steering is a little bit quicker the Niner at slower speeds has steering that feels a little bit floppy. So if you have used a mountain bike with a slacker head angle, it just feels like the handlebars will kind of flop around a little bit at slower speeds. Now the advantage is at higher speeds, especially as you're going through loose stuff like sand or loose gravel, uh, the Niner will feel a little bit more stable at speed. Now, I also wanna mention that the Niner has a little bit lower bottom bracket. It's about five millimeters lower. However, when jumping back and forth between these bikes, I really don't notice that difference. To me, it feels like the bottom brackets are the same height. After spending a year on the Niner, I never felt like the handling was off. I like the way the bike handled. However, riding the Giant, I do prefer the way the steering feels a little bit more on the Giant. So the stability on both bikes is about equal because the Giant has a longer wheelbase. Uh, so the Giant handles stability with a longer wheelbase, whereas the Niner ha handles the stability uh, with a little bit of extra trail. And the final quality that I talked about is stiffness when pedaling. I think both of these bikes feel the same. Uh, they are both frames that are built with excellent carbon. The build quality is excellent on both. Uh, when you stand up and pedal, the bikes are relatively stiff. And so again, there's really not a winner in that category. Now, a lot of your purchasing decision is going to come down to the relationship that you have with your local bike shop. Are they a Niner dealer? Do you have access to Niner? Can't go wrong with the Niner RLT9 RDO. Giant dealer, obviously you can't go wrong with the Giant Revolt. So hopefully this comparison was helpful for you. There's a lot of factors to consider when buying a bike. Both of these bikes are excellent gravel bikes that I would pick any day of the week to do a long gravel ride on. So questions or comments that you have about this video or these bikes, go ahead and drop those below. Thanks for watching.